Africans are deeply religious. Most aspects of their life are related to the sacred world. It is not easy, however, to find orthodox ideals related to God. Muslims, Christians, and animists, three different outlooks between man and divinity, which are blended in such a way that it is difficult to find cults that are not influenced by one another. In Africa, God's spirits and fetishes adapt to the whims of man. This allows me to believe that there is only one God above all men. And for he who knows Africa, and especially Benin, when a person is not afraid of voodoo, witchcraft, and all these things, that is when he begins to fulfill himself. The Celestial Church of Christ promotes a charismatic cult halfway between Christianity and Voodoo, which has always dominated the southern coast of Western Africa. It was founded in 1947 by Samuel Bilehua Shofa, a carpenter who received the Word of God. An angel bathed in light announced God's will for Ashofa to be the last prophet, the one who would lead man away from the dark paths of fetishism, from crazy Catholicism, and from the false evangelical churches. He told him that he should establish his own church and spread his message around the world. His work began immediately, and in just three years, the movement had extended throughout broad areas of Benin and Nigeria. Today it has more than 10 million followers throughout Western Africa, Europe, and the United States. The supreme head of the church is Reverend Pastor Benoit D. Agbaosi, and he is known as the Celestial Father. Eating pork or animals that have been strangled is not allowed. We do not drink alcohol either. We wear white robes and we go barefoot. The women must cover their hair with a bonnet when they go to the temple. A man and a woman cannot share the same bench or have any relationship while wearing the robe. The use of voodoo fetishes is totally prohibited. We exclusively adore God. These are the orders that Oshofa, the creator of this church, taught us. But if there is something that characterizes the followers of the Celestial Church of Christ, it is their ability to achieve a direct line with God. If you listen to my words about the existence of God, 
you will really feel ecstasy. Perhaps you may be surprised when you feel yourself going into a trance. You will feel like you are abandoning your physical heavy body in order to enter a more lighter one, a spiritual body. We possess the ability to directly communicate with the Holy Spirit and with our relatives who have abandoned this world. I am an assistant veterinarian, which means that my job consists of attending to the animals, caring for them, and keeping them healthy. This job is how I earn a living. But the satisfaction that the church offers me is incomparable, and the church attracts many people with difficulties. It attracts sick people, people in need, and people who need moral support. In terms of my personal life, I have two wives. And if we talk about sanctification, you will understand why we have polygamy among certain priests of the celestial church. The women, when they are menstruating or have their periods in colloquial terms, should not cook for us. We cannot sleep in the same bed as her and we cannot sit by her side. We cannot have any physical contact with her. We cannot touch her. This justifies, in a certain way, polygamy in our church. My first wife belongs to our religion, the Celestial Church. My second wife is Catholic. A saucer punished him with this illness two years ago. He worked in the field and out of nowhere he fell ill. No one at the hospital knew what to tell us and our church, no as a Renaissance church, did not help us. The Celestial Fathers have been able to make my brother get better, and he just says their prayers. Today an exorcism is being carried out on Josephine's brother to free him of the interior evil that he possesses.
We have proof that shows the miracle of healing in our church. At the Central Church of Cotonou, every Wednesday, the ceremony of the infertile woman is held. The number of attendees to this event is suspiciously high. The dreams, the state of being in a trance, and the gift of languages are considered a manifestation of the Holy Spirit and the patron angels. The liturgy and the splendor of the members copies the Catholic Church, but the beliefs are based on the voodoo world. They believe in Jesus Christ and also in the Orishas, or benevolent deities, and the Ojogun, men of war who aspire to destroy man. Elle va prier pour l'Éternel des armées dans sa prière. Elle avait demandé à ce que Dieu lui accorde au moins un enfant. The visionary women are distinguished with a blue belt. They usually do not remember the prognosis made during the state of trance, which is why a scribe is needed. New possible followers are subject to a session in which one of these visionaries clarifies their present and warns them about the steps they should take in the future. Le bonheur là te fut, 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 fut. J'ai vu, j'ai vu, j'ai vu, la maman est encore derrière toi, regardez. Si tu bouges, la maman même bouge, bouge, bouge. Des fois tu es bien, des fois tu es malade. Alléluia, si on est né dans la famille polygamie, on, tu dois savoir te comporter dans la famille. Il y a trop de l'obscurité devant toi. On veut t'éliminer. Voilà, voilà, dans la famille. Oui, moi je crois à la religion céleste. I believe in the celestial religion, only in the word of God, not in the charlatans, because we do things with miracles, and that is why the charlatans are not with us. Après, le docteur va demander l'opération. Il ne faut jamais accepter. Jésus Christ. La vision que Leontine m'a fait hier. La vision que Leontine a fait hier est complètement accurate, parfaitement true et clair. Je vois que c'est la vérité et c'est clair. It is something like a miracle, a hand that rests on your shoulder, and the vision comes. Sometimes I can see the angels in this way, I can see the angels flying, but they never descend, they remain just like that, floating in the air. Holy Michael, George of Atom, George of Atom, George of Atom, Jetteson Lomewa, Dra de Vito Elepo, Je n'adorerai que Dieu et Dieu seul. Et les envoyés, ils leur donnaient l'autorité à ces pareils fétiches. We have registered 242,000 members who have been baptized here in our country.
It is difficult for me to list all the miracles that have taken place in our church. They become daily facts. For example, we have the miracle of Raphael, whom a sorcerer placed a spell on. He gave him an evil spirited lamb and said to him, the day that this lamb of yours dies, you will also die. Raphael begged us for help, and I, myself, led the prayers at his home. The day arrived when the lamb died, but Raphael didn't, and today he continues to be one of our followers. You know that in Africa, and especially in Benin, that it is impossible to explain everything according to our traditional beliefs. And the Celestial Church of Christ has certain characteristics that help its followers to fight stress. There are as many men on earth as there are spirits in the river, and we are expected to collaborate with these spirits. They show us the path to follow in life in order to be successful and not fail. The jimbala, or the spirits, are similar to men. There are good ones and bad ones. It may be a good jinn that accompanies you in life, or maybe a bad one. The job of the yin is like a dark science. On the Niger, they believe in the genies of the river, spirits that guide, protect, and punish those who approach the waters of their jurisdiction. The origin of the Jin cult lies in a specific geographic area in a town called Moro. An enormous pit where all the practices came about is located here. These practices were later used in countries like Brazil or the voodoo of Benin. The Holy Hori is the ceremony that synthesizes the cult with the genies of the river. These genies possess the bodies of the participants. We are followers of this cult. We know where they are found, whether they are in the water, in the field, or even here among us. The hole is not something closed, but it is not something open to the first person who comes before it. If someone wants to form part of the hole, he has to allow himself to be observed by these spirits beforehand.
We do not need to talk about ourselves. It is just like honey. She does not say that she is sweet. The person who tries her knows that she is sweet. In regards to my life, everything that I am, both the problems that I have had and the success that I am experiencing now, thank God, I owe it all to the Spirit because I believe in them and I fulfill all the practices that are necessary. So-called radical Islam does not exist. Islam is cordial, merciful, and generous. In Islam, people help more. They give more charity and know God better. The Sufis, we are the soul of Islam. Sheikh Mohammed is the leader of the Sufi sect of the Rafai of Cairo. He is a direct descendant of the Prophet, in order to lead the sect, he had to leave everything behind, including his family and lands. The Sufis are a mystic and not very orthodox branch of Islam. They believe in the secret and magical value of words. Sheikh Mohammed maintains that he is able to cure people by reading fragments of the Quran repeatedly and at specific times. Our organization was created for charity and mercy. It is in charge of the pilgrimage to Mecca, as well as caring for orphans, restoring the mosques, and offering medical aid. At our clinic, we attend to people who live in the corners of the Republic. We are responsible for them until they return to their homes. Sheikh Mohammed. Sheikh Mohammed is the grandson of Imam Hussein, the direct descendant of the Prophet. His family is noble. God protects his members and does them well. Sheikh Mohammed offers food here to the poor and to the travelers on a daily basis, and he takes in all the people in need. Every Friday afternoon, in front of a small mosque located outside of Khartoum, hundreds of men come together for hours to dance and sing in order to acquire a mystic contact with God, two dervish dancers, the Sufis of Andorman. The human being is part of this universe, a living and responsible part at the same time. The universe is part of him as well. This vision brings together several religions, but I believe that Islamic Sufism is what makes it more complete in some way. Sufism is the interior face of Islam, a search for unity through the love of God's work, which is understood as a whole. The word Sufi is most likely derived from the wool vestments, the Suf, which were used by the ascetic Muslims, who were referred to as the poor or dervish. The color green is the color of paradise. It is the color of life. Wherever you find the color green, you will find life. You will find trees, water, birds, shelter under the shade and a breeze. Everything is linked to the color green. It is the opposite of poverty, the opposite of fire and repression. It is the space where human beings are incorporated into nature. It is the future of man. 
For the Sufis, man is a microcosm and the universe is the macrocosm. And to provoke the mystic union of both elements, which are only one, the Sufi uses meditation, the state of trance, hashish, music, and dance, as well as words and sounds with magical powers. Other orthodox visions have persecuted this very peculiar vision of Islam, since in the Sufis they see a kind of pantheism and dissolute behavior that is distant from the plans of the Prophet. Every 15th of July, thousands of Sufis from all over the continent of Africa and the Middle East pilgrimage to Cairo to coincide with the birthday of Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet. The Sufis come together around his mosque. They dance and sing. They pray and go into trance. It means celebrating the memory of the Prophet's grandson for the love of Hussein and his grandfather. Here the sheikhs, we set up the large tents and we feed the poor and the needy as a way of applying the Quran text that says, we feed you in the name of God without wanting any compensation or gratitude. The Quran says, take from me what you want for whatever you want. The Prophet says, cure your sick through charity. The Quran is healing. If there is anyone suffering from pain, I read some verses to him, some words with power, and the repetition of these words cures him. This also happens with music. Music helps to move man, to make him feel happy. For the Orthodox, music is an aberration. For us, it is a reason for joy. The poet said, whoever is not rejoiced by the lute and its tunes, the spring and its flowers, will have a bad character that does not have any cure. Music makes the body vibrate and move into the state of illumination. This is the true encounter with God. But this is not only music and movement. There are secret formulas, words, and rhythms that emanate from God. Who are the Sufis? What are they like? How did they cross the desert and enter the forests? How did they live in large cities around the world? I have dedicated my time to studying the Sufis, their lives, and above all, their ideas. I found that a very important world existed. This is the world that I wanted to draw. Sufism offers the individual liberty and at the same time responsibility. Liberty and responsibility. When an individual is aware of his liberty and his responsibility, he becomes a creator, just like God himself.
Sufism means religion without heresy, soul without desire, work without rest, and a heart without words. Thus, it is education, composure, and ethics derived from the Quran and from the tradition of the Prophet. Sufi music helps to sublimate our hearts through the praise of God. The Prophet said, Inside the body there is a piece of flesh which, if it is healthy, the whole body will be. It's the heart. Sufism is something ancient. It has existed since human beings entered this world and began to ask questions. That is why we are criticized by those who have all the answers because we continue to ask questions. My dream is to see Jerusalem freed and for good, love and happiness to reign, for everyone to live calmly. I want Almighty God to calm our hearts, for everything to be in harmony and for well-being, for peace to be with us all. Kuko is a small village in the north of Ghana. Its first inhabitants belong to the Dabamba tribe. But for a long time, it has taken in the women who have been accused of witchcraft. They are women who come from all the corners of Western Africa. Being taken in by the town, the women are subject to an ancient ritual of cleansing. Once they are accepted in the town, the inhabitants maintain that living together with the presumed witches is extremely affable. I don't remember when we began to take in witches in this village. My father had not been born when this began. The families of these women bring them here since they do not want them. They are bathed in order to cleanse them and they take an oath. If there is any witchcraft left in them, I don't know where they hide it in their bodies. Mahami is the king of the village, but the women accused of witchcraft have their own leader. In my town, every time a child cried, they blamed me. If someone fell ill, they blamed me. So they decided to bring me to Kukua. They feared me. I don't even know who I am. There is no one inside my stomach to find out the truth. I came all by myself. I wanted to cleanse myself. You drink water and take an oath. If there is any witchcraft left in you, 
You die from diarrhea in a few days. Envy is what brought me here. They kept all of my things and got rid of all the bothersome women. The case of Maria is one of the most moving. No one knows where she is from, since the rest of the village is unfamiliar with her dialect. And given her age, she had to make a big effort to adapt to an unknown language and new customs. I have lived for so many years that I cannot remember how many. I had 12 children and I witnessed it, 10 of them die. They blame me for their deaths. The other two brought me here and built me this small house. But they left and have never returned. I remember when I arrived. I did not know anyone or understand the language that they spoke. The most difficult thing was taking the bath. Everything was dark and silent. They undressed me, and some women, who I did not know, washed my entire body. I was afraid to drink that water. Being able to see my children again would make me laugh in the midst of so much sadness. When I came to Sofomar, I was warmly welcomed. We were sitting around the fire with our lamp, and after having tea, I looked towards the moon. It was a full moon, and my heart was beating fast. I separated myself from the people, and I sat next to the entrance of the caves, under the moonlight. I was praying and looking at the moon for an hour. When I woke up, it was as if I had awoken from a dream. These are the great days of Sofamar, the days when there is a full moon. What a full moon. I can still remember it. I started my journey in Addis Ababa and I took the bus to Kofali. I joined some pilgrims there and we walked together for several days. The brotherhood during the journey is what makes us strong. Everyone helps each other and while we move our legs, our heads become more agile and our hearts grow stronger. Gary Mingitsu is a retired movie actor whose tragic story was the beginning of his never-ending pilgrimage. Nine years ago, his wife and only daughter were killed in a car accident, which he feels responsible for. It happened on the night of the full moon during the month of September. His wife was of the Oromo ethnic group, and the last thing they had done together was travel to the caves of Sofomar, a sacred place where the Oromos make a pilgrimage to request favors. Since then, coinciding with the full moon in September, Gary repeats that trip to nourish his memories and to pray for his wife and daughter.
I need to do this once a year. And it is not only for them. The stress of the city kills my nerves, and there are times when I feel like I'm going to explode and that the noise and pollution are going to do me in. This yearly trip is like therapy, which helps me to maintain hope in order to continue living. The city is a horrible place that I bear like a heavy burden. I'm Muslim, and she was as well, but the Oromos, aside from believing in God, believe in the spirits. Sofomar taught the Oromos the Muslim religion. In the caves, they live together. God is there, but so is Vak, the spirit of the sky, of rain. And there are others, hundreds of spirits that control everything. I believe that everything forms part of the same unit, the different faces of God, that's all. No one knows exactly when Sofomar was here, maybe during the 14th century. He was a man who was spiritually very powerful. He would enter the cave and ask for it to rain. Then, it would rain. And if there was a war going on or if there were diseases, he would remain in the caves day and night and these problems would disappear. Sofomar had a daughter, Ayomoko. In reality, she was the one who had powers. The people would come from far away to ask her for favors, and they still do. My husband and I are in charge of welcoming the travelers. So Fomara and Ayomoko did this as well. So one could say the three major ones uh, grew up here in the country. In the third uh, goes along with the diversity of cultures. Uh, goes along with uh, these three major uh, apologetic uh, branches. They grew up in fusion of fusion of time. They created about 60 to 100 languages. And the to I walked for about seven days before reaching Sofumar. During my journey, I met people like myself, pilgrims, who were walking to the cave. We would pass people who were coming from and going to the market with little girls who were carrying bundles of firewood, which must have weighed twice as much as they did. The amount of life alongside the road in my country has always surprised me. There are few motor vehicles. It's as if the roads had been made in order to widen the paths that once connected the villages. Everyone moves from one place to another, and they take most of their valuables with them, their animals, their families. Here we are like pilgrims, we're not going anywhere. We traveled part of the time on the main road, and other times we traveled through the mountain to shorten our journey. And we would stop and rest and pray every once in a while. In order to reach the caves of Sofomar, Gary travels from sunrise to sunset. He wakes up early, eats breakfast, and starts his journey once again. Gary walks an average of 10 hours a day. To maintain this pace, he takes chat, a stimulating plant that grows in the higher regions of Ethiopia.
These people saved my life once. It was during my third pilgrimage. I got malaria and I was very sick. I did not have medicine and they treated me with the traditional plants. They are sacred people with great knowledge in traditional medicine. They sheltered me in their home for three days. They fed me and they treated me like part of the family. Since then, I stop here every year and I bring them some chat as a gesture of gratitude. For a city man like myself, coming to a place like this means fulfilling a large part of your dreams. I spend the year thinking about the time when I will return to Sofomar. I have friends who have come to ask for children and wealth, and Sofomar has granted them their wishes. I do not come to ask for anything, but to give thanks for everything that I have, and also to remember the memory of my wife and daughter. While I am strong enough to return to Sofomar, my wife and daughter will remain alive inside me. Every movement in the rituals of Sofomar is a synthesis of Christian, Muslim, and animist beliefs. The chants, the dances, the sacrifices. Texts from the Quran are read with the same devotion as the offerings made to the spirits of the caves and the water that inhabits Sofomar. <laughs> Aulea lives here inside. His spirit is everywhere. Aulea is also mentioned in the Quran. It is a spirit with great power, and we ask him for favors. He is the intermediary between Sofamar and the people. Religion is the hope for the people of Africa, especially in Ethiopia, for everything. The place where we find refuge is in our religion. When God punishes us with AIDS or with the lack of rain, He continues to be with us. He is our life and our hope. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله